Namaskar, good evening. Welcome to NCRD's live interactive session. This is Simran Singh. You are all watching us on PME with their channel, number 6212, or you might also connect with us to our YouTube channel that you all know. It's NCERD official. It's around 4 p.m. on your watch, and for the entire one hour, this is our special session that we call a webinar. These webinar sessions are going to be very interesting and knowledgeable for all our viewers as we are conducting the five days online training on digital infrastructure for social education, for school education, that is Diksha. And we all know that uh, Diksha, it's the digital infrastructure for knowledge sharing. We are going to conduct this five days online training that started out yesterday. That is on 21st of March till 25th March. So yesterday we discussed about Diksha, policy perspectives and scope in education. And today in the conversation, our topic is Digital resources on Diksha for teaching, learning and assessment as a broader part of our today's topic that is digital infrastructure for school education, Diksha. So throwing more light on today's topic and providing us guidance in this session, we have with us our two experts in the studio. Let me introduce them to you. We have with us Professor Indu Kumar. Namaskar ma'am. Namaskar. A very warm Thank welcome you. in the Thank session. You. Ma'am is from CIT and CRE. Besides, we are also joined by Dr. Prachi Sharma. Namaskar, ma'am. Namaskar. Welcome on board. Thank you. Ma'am is academic consultant, Deeksha from CIET and CERE. Viewers throughout our live interaction, if you have any of the queries, so feel free to reach out to us in the comment section of NCERE official. Besides, here is our contact number flashing on your screen. You may note down this number. That is 8800440559. Apart from that, if any of your queries, your messages or feedbacks remain unanswered, so here is our mail ID for all of your queries. It's training.helpdesk at the rate ciad.nic.in. So let's begin this online training and over to both our experts present in the studio. Thank you. Thank you, Simran. Thank you, Simran. So welcome everyone in second day online training of Diksha. Yesterday, we have learned about Diksha from the policy perspective of uh, uh, NEP 2020 and also learned what is the scope of Diksha in teaching, learning and assessment. As we all know, there are more than 2 lakh e-contents are available on Diksha portal and these resources are being utilized by the various stakeholders of education. In today's session, we will demonstrate the various type of resources, digital resources available on Diksha portal. For this, we have Professor Indu Kumar with us. She is National Coordinator of Diksha. I request Professor Indu Kumar ma'am to explain what are the various form of digital resources are available on Diksha portal and how teacher can use these resources from the portal. Over to you, ma'am. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Prachi. Thank you very much. So, when we talk about uh, the Iksha, so it is very, very important to know what are the various types of resources which are available on the Iksha. There is a there 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 is a lot to do uh, for teachers, students, uh, parents, and community as uh, at large as far as availability of resources on uh, the Iksha is concerned. So there are resources for teaching, uh, 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 that is for pedagogical uses. There are resources for uh, learning, which uh, using which students can uh, self-learn and explore uh, more knowledge uh, about uh, what they learn through textbooks and other curricular resources. And uh, there are also assessment items on the Iksha, resources for assessment on the Iksha. And somehow we have tried to have uh, an element of gamified uh, assessment also on the Iksha and uh, learning and assessment both uh, on the Iksha. So it would be very interesting for all of us to know the various forms of digital resources on the Iksha. But before that, it is very, very important for us to know what do we understand by uh, digital resources? What is the a very definition or meaning of digital resources. If we can uh, project the PPT here, we can see uh, the uh, definition of uh, digital resources. What do we uh, understand by digital resources? So digital resources are e-text. We can also uh, have 
uh, electronic text documents uh, in the form of digital resources. Then there are uh, videos, audio, voice narration, music, sound effects, images and graphics. So these resources can be singly or they can also be in combination. And what purpose these resources uh, show uh, is that they create a piece of uh, narration or communication, educational communication. So that can be fictional or uh, non-fictional. So uh, all these uh, media or multimedia narration uh, are called uh, you, uh, digital resources, so which can enable us creating a um, media or multimedia narration or uh, digital resources. So we can see various forms also. What are the various format, uh, formats or forms of digital resources which are available on Diksha? So here uh, in this slide, uh, we can see various formats of the di digital resources. So uh, Diksha, uh, the, uh, the uh, potential of Diksha can also be leveraged for uh, having uh, professional developments, uh, development of teachers. So we have uh, teachers courses which are available on Diksha. Then we have lesson plans. Uh, there are a lot of activities which are available on Diksha. Assessment, I have already spoken about. We have a lot of assessment uh, resources available on Diksha. Then there are uh, uh, quizzes also. Quizzes also available on Diksha because uh, uh, quizzes also play a very, very important role as far as competing with our own self is concerned and competing with, uh, with our peers uh, is concerned uh, in... Uh, uh, for assessment or for taking up uh, questions and all. And there are another form of resources which are available on Diksha are images. We have a lot of images which are there on Diksha. Then uh, there are uh, videos and audio resources. Some video clips are there and there are complete uh, videos also. There are interactive contents, uh, interactive gamified content on Diksha, which is another form of content available on Diksha. And uh, there are a lot of worksheets and assessment sheets available on Diksha. Apart from this, we also have uh, digital textbooks uh, on Diksha. So uh, Dr. Prachi, these were the various forms of digital resources which are uh, are there on Diksha. So we can take them into details uh, further yes, and demonstrate them as well. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, as you uh, talked about the images, hmm. so what are the resources fall under the category of images or how teacher can be use these images in teaching and learning? Can you explain this? Yeah, so uh, that's a very uh, good question. Images are uh, uh, kind of digital content which uh, are very easy to create. We can just use a mobile device to create uh, photographs which uh, is a form of images. Then there are infographics, there are diagrams, there are charts, uh, there are uh, uh, mind maps, there are maps, digital maps. So all these forms of digital resources fall under the category of images because we have them in image form on the Iksha. We can take up some of the examples also. We yes, even have uh, some uh, uh, resources which fall under the category of a cartoon, an image of a cartoon. So uh, I have uh, this on, the, uh, uh, on my system so we can project them like here uh, in this uh, a slide you can see image of a cartoon uh, which uh, depicts a dinosaur uh, and uh, there is written missing over it since a billion, billion years and the other animals are watching this missing uh, dinosaur. So this is a cartoon. So uh, Dr. Prachi asked me how these images can be used by teachers as a pedagogical resource to introduce the topic like uh, extension of uh, species, we can use such cartoon to warm up the class on further learning on uh, the, the uh, complex concept like extension of the species. There are a lot of species and their features which gradually 
uh, uh, get extended as these species get uh, evolved and some species altogether get extended from the uh, ecosystem, from the environment. So it, it is a complex topic, but using cartoon, we can add a little lightness to uh, such topics and encourage teachers to learn uh, about them. So we can also take up some other examples of uh, images as digital resources. So this is an example of diagrams which depicts the process of waterfall uh, formation, how waterfall are formed. So uh, this is also another images, uh, another example of image which we uh, can uh, categorize as diagrams. Then there are uh, uh, we, we can see another example if we, uh, yeah. So this is a, an example of a photograph. So photographs can also be uh, created into a very good digital resources and they also fall under the category of images. So this is a photograph of black uh, winged stilt. So this is a bird. So doing little research on such photographs, we can turn them into good digital resources. So all uh, <clears throat> such photographs are also available on Diksha. So we can, can we move on to the next slide where there is a little detail about <coughs> the bird which we had in the previous image. So, uh, okay. So we can do a little research on such photographs like the photograph on bird. We can research on what is the scientific name of the bird, what kind of migratory habits they have. And while discussing such topics, uh, we can use uh, these images as pedagogical resources. We can take them from the Iksha and uh, use them as pedagogical resources. We can also uh, have uh, postage stamps uh, turned into images, we can click photographs of the uh, postage stamp and turn them into uh, digital resources. So uh, here you can see, can we go on to the previous slide where there is an enlarged picture of this uh, postage stamp. So you can see here a postage stamp. This uh, postage stamp was released in uh, 1963. Uh, so we can uh, see on the next slide how we uh, gathered information by doing a little research on this uh, postage stamp. So it was released on 2nd uh, February 1963 and this is a commemorative stamp uh, which was uh, released by Indian Post and Telegraph Department uh, by Government of India on 2nd Feb 1963. Uh, so uh, it uh, was released to commemorate the uh, works of poet Kalidas and in the image you can see Shakuntala lying <coughs> in the forest with uh, two of uh, her friends and writing a letter to uh, Dushyant. So like that we can make the learning of uh, subject like uh, Sanskrit also very very interesting. Uh, for the learner. We can go back into history a little bit and uh, project interesting facts about our uh, history, about our heritage, about <clears throat> the poet like Kalidas. So uh, apart from this, uh, this commemorative stamp is based on a painting by Raja Ravi Verma. So we can also bring such interesting facts uh, to the students by converting a lot of heritage which is out there to make a certain uh, things which are around us uh, for converting them on as digital resource and having them on a platform like uh, Deeksha which is accessible to all and they can uh, get interesting resources uh, to be used as pedagogical resources for the teaching learning of various subjects. Thank you so much ma'am for <coughs> explaining how images can be used in teaching learning and it is very interesting to click some pictures and use these pictures as resources and we can upload, we can see these resources on Diksha portal. 
Um, I have a one question. Hmm. We have a physical textbooks hmm. with us. So, what is a specific purpose to uh, use digital textbooks and uh, use of digital textbooks on the Iksha portal? Yeah. So, what is the uh, specific need of this? Huh. So, uh, to make uh, the uh, uh, textbooks available digitally anytime, anywhere is the purpose of having uh, digital textbooks on uh, digital portals like Deeksha and also mobile app. These digital textbooks are also uh, available on mobile app. Then they are accessible anywhere, anytime and the textbooks are there on your palm top on a mobile device. Yes. So, uh, it, 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 for ease of access, we need to have digital textbooks also because students or teachers also are not carrying these physical books all the time with them. When we are traveling for long hours, we can mm -hmm. access these textbooks from our, uh, our mobile device and uh, just get, get uh, into learning out of these uh, digital textbooks. So, as far as digital textbooks which are available on the Iksha, so these textbooks are energized textbooks. We call them energized textbooks. So, uh, Ma'am, is there any difference between digital textbook or energized textbooks? Uh, energized textbooks are one form of digital textbooks. We have digital textbooks in PDF formats also. We have them in the form of flip, flipped book also, which gives us an experience of physical books. We can flip the pages of the textbooks, mm -hmm. physical textbook, which is available in digital form. Then we have EPUBs also, textbooks in EPUB formats. Though uh, right now EPUB format is not uh, available on the Iksha, but uh, we are also technically enabling the Iksha to have EPUB version of the textbooks uh, also. So what is uh, specific, uh, specific about EPUB version is another question which uh, we need to know. Yes. So, EPUB version is a reflowable kind of a format. So, we have various uh, a kind of devices like mobile, tablets, laptop, desktop. So, if we have EPUBs, so the, these get adjusted into the size of the uh, size of the screen of the device which we are using. If we have a small screen device, then the textbooks will not get distorted and they will give us an experience, an uninterrupted, uh, uh, uninterrupted and uh, very interesting experience of accessing the textbooks. Uh, nothing will get distorted because of the screen size of the device. So that is the speciality of uh, EPUB version of digital textbooks coming on to energized textbooks. So uh, the, the physical version of the textbooks are also energized. Uh, using uh, or Im, uh, embedding QR codes in them. And we have the same QR coded energized textbooks on uh, Deeksha also. So why we are calling them an energized textbooks? Because uh, there are uh, resources, chapter based resources linked to these QR codes which are embedded in the chapters of the textbooks. So we can uh, scan the QR code by a mobile app and then we can access the resources linked to the, uh, the uh, linked to the QR codes uh, of the specific chapter. So that is how we energize uh, the textbook. So ma'am, we have an energized textbook on Diksha portal. Yeah, we have and we can also see an example. So it is there in uh, the presentation that we have. You can help me out accessing one uh, energized textbooks. So let us take an uh, example of a primary English textbooks. So uh, this is Mary Gold for uh, class uh, two. So I will take my audience on the portal yeah. where we can <coughs> see the example of energized textbook. Uh, we will. I am clicking on Explore Diksha. Here we can see some filters are uh, appearing on the left hand side. You just, uh, let us just access uh, the Marigold. Yes ma'am. So process we will learn later on. Marigold for class 2. Is that the textbook or class 1? Class 2. Class 2. 
yes so here you can see unit 1 of uh, mary gold uh, which is uh, english uh, textbook for class uh, 2 and the name of uh, the unit is first day at school so can you scroll uh, the uh, chapter down it's a poem i think you can make it full screen so that re yes. uh, the audience can see the poem so this is the poem uh, so we uh, have various uh, digital resources linked to the QR code of this particular chapter. So Dr. Prachi, can we see the digital resource? We have an audio version also uh, of this chapter. So if you can play the audio of the textbook, so which uh, will be suitable for children who have difficulty in uh, uh, difficulty in reading who are visually impaired so that is how uh, they uh, these textbooks uh, have been made accessible for children with special needs also by having audio version of each uh, chapters so can we play the audio version you will easily understand when you did not have school I mean one say green okay but this time when you now recite this poem it is called first day at school I wonder if my drawing will be as good as theirs I wonder if they like me or just be full of stairs I wonder if my teacher will look like mom or gran. I wonder if my puppy will wonder where I am. And now. So uh, that was the audio version of the textbooks and it is also for uh, one of the uh, language learning skill which is uh, uh, listening and also for children with special needs. So we have reading, writing, listening, um, uh, the skills like uh, reading, writing and listening as far as language learning is concerned. So this resource is very good resource for uh, listening. Then uh, for the visual learner, we also have video related to the same uh, unit and uh, same poem. So can we also demonstrate a uh, video so that we understand how the video aid to the uh, experience. Yeah. Oh, Polly. Oh, yes, yes. Any idea what this poem is going to be about? It is about a child who is going to school. Let's Joy. I wonder, I wonder if my drawing will be as good as theirs. I wonder, I wonder if they'll like me or just be full of stairs. I wonder, I wonder. I wonder if my teacher will look like my mom or grand. I wonder, I wonder if my puppy will wonder where I am. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. So like that, various uh, forms of resources are linked with the QR codes of the textbooks and that is how we energize these uh, textbooks. Uh, it is very interesting to see ma'am these uh, resources. Uh, ma'am, nowadays we, are, we talk about uh, inclusive learning. So do we have any resources for uh, children with special needs? Can we use these resources with these energized textbooks? Yeah, Do we so, have an example of these resources? Yeah. 
So, uh, um, I, I already explained that audio books are yes, also yes, for children with special needs, but we have another formats also for children with special needs. Good that you reiterate this uh, question to uh, have a demonstration of more resources for children with special needs. Linked with the same chapter, we have an ISL video also, Indian Sign Language video. If you scroll uh, a bit down, you will get that ISL video also. Uh, so that making the learning of the same chapter interesting for the children who are hearing impaired. So can we see the video, uh, ISL video, Indian Sign Language video here? First day at school. I wonder if my drawing will be as good as theirs. I wonder if they like me or just be full of stares. I wonder if my teacher will look like mom or gran. I wonder if my puppy will wonder where I am. A poem by Eileen Fisher. So uh, that is how we can make uh, teaching learning uh, for children with special needs uh, interesting and uh, enhance uh, through such sign language videos. So there are a lot of sign language videos which are available on Diksha. And there is also an ISL dictionary also which is there uh, on Diksha. So our viewers can explore all such resources for children with special needs. So, which uh, yes, already uh, are housed on the It is the very Asia. interesting to see these resources. Actually, these resources are actually cater the need of special with uh, children with yeah, very special true, needs. Prachi, very true. Yeah. Ma'am, as per the NEP 2020, vocational education is also a very important area. Yeah. So, do we have any uh, energized textbooks here, digital textbook or resources in this area? Yeah. yeah, so uh, yes, uh, Dr. Prachi, thank you uh, for asking this question also. It is really one of the very important yes, concern of NEP 2020. So vocational education stream is coming up as a, a very well acknowledged stream for uh, children of this country. And it is very, very important also to uh, popularize this vocational education stream. So we have uh, more than 150 textbooks on uh, vocational education also on Diksha, which are uh, energized. To uh, emphasize on this particular aspect of education, as a future step, we are also going to have a separate vertical for vocational education on Diksha. So it has already in the pipeline, we have done a lot of groundwork to have this vertical on Diksha where as a separate vertical all the content and textbooks related to vocational education will be housed at one place and they also can be accessed by the stakeholder from that particular vertical on Diksha. We can see an example of vocational education textbook as well. So you can uh, click on to the URL on my uh, uh, PPT to access a vocational education textbook also, which is energized. Uh, yes, uh, you are there on the PPT. So let us move on to uh, the specific slide. So uh, here is the slide. So this is about employability skill. So this is a chapter, chapter of a textbook. Yes, ma'am, yeah, this unit is a unit one, one okay. uh, for class 11th. Yeah. Here we can see the uh, PDF of chapter. Yeah, you just explore and demonstrate the resources yeah. which are linked to this particular unit, Dr. Prachi. Yes, yes. So we, we can see a PDF of this particular <coughs> unit. I will make it full screen so yeah. you, user can see better. So yes, this, is the, uh, this is the communication skills unit one. 
Here we can see the PDF of particular unit and so this is the chapter this, this is, is the, chapter. the unit text uh, document yes, e text e text document okay good or uh, here we can see some practice questions so can some, we see uh, the example yeah, of uh, a yes. practice question also We can see some gamified content also. These practice set questions are so the gamified. So this is an assessment. Yes, ma'am. This is assessment. an example okay. of assessment. assessment. Yeah. So what is the question? So why which action can a sender send his or her messages? So here these are the options. Options are listening, speaking, sleeping, none of the above. Now I am clicking on speaking and click on next so so that was we the can correct check our answer. answer so it was correct so then we can move on to the next question next question is which of the following method is used to receive information from the sender now i am clicking on wrong answer see what will happen Here we can see the option of try again. We can uh, redo it and we can skip it and go to the so next. So next term. is also written. Uh, yes, uh, either we can move on to the next, next question or, or we, we can, can re the question. Re okay. question. So that is how different activities are also linked. Uh, assessment activities are also linked to the uh, chapters of the textbook. So can we see another resource linked to this chapter? Yes, ma'am. We can go back maybe. We can cross and maybe uh, go back to the I will reopen it. Yeah. Here I would like to inform all our viewers that we still have around 20 to 22 minutes in the session. If you have any of the queries, any questions, any messages related to this topic, so feel free to reach out to us in the comment section of NCERT official. So can we go on to the next resource? And what is that resource? Is it a video or something else? Uh, Ma'am, here we can only two forms of resources in this textbook that hmm. are practice set questions or text document. Okay. Maybe in another book we get more we, uh, uh, types more of resources. resources okay, so, okay. So there is a possibility, uh, Dr. Prachi, to link various forms of resources with the yes, energized textbooks. But uh, with this particular textbooks uh, textbook, we have. Only two, uh, only two, uh, two kind types of resources. resources. Uh, one is e-text and, and another, another is, is assessment. assessment item. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, 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 what next? Uh, what are we going to uh, have uh, to demonstrate next? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, ma form we, of resource? Yes, yes. ma'am. Ma'am, as we know, there are a uh, lot of courses available on Diksha portal. Hmm. So, uh, I want to know about, is there any specific course for parents? Uh, so, parents get benefited from Diksha portal and uh, com, uh, what are the courses available for our stakeholders? Hmm. So, uh, there are a lot of courses also available for the professional development of teacher. In NEP 2020 also, it is recommended that technology can be leveraged uh, for the professional development of uh, uh, teachers. teachers. So, we yeah. already uh, had two round of uh, courses under Nishtha courses for teachers. So, one was uh, for elementary teachers, Nishtha elementary, uh, Nishtha uh, 1.0. And another was for secondary teachers, NISTA 2.0. And uh, currently, we are uh, having NISTA 3.0 for foundational uh, literacy and numeracy. Apart from this, we have courses for other stakeholders also. You uh, asked about uh, do we have courses for, for parents. parents as well. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of generic courses also uh, for uh, parents and for adult education also. Adult education is also one 
uh, other area of major concern reflected in NEP 2020. So adult, among adult learners, there are parents also. And there are retired professionals who want to indulge into lifelong learning. So there are a lot of generic courses also. We can see examples of a few courses which are there on Diksha. One is uh, Catch uh, the Rain, uh, which is about rainwater harvesting. So rainwater harvesting is a topic which is suitable for all. Yes, so sir. water conservation is one of the major concern, which is uh, also reflected in uh, the, uh, the, the, the Millennium Goals also as one of the major area of concern. So this course is about how to uh, conserve uh, rain water and there are a lot of resource material uh, for uh, teaching the stakeholders on rain or water harvesting. So parents as well as general audience can be the consumer of such uh, courses which are uh, there on Diksha the and this course we have uh, hosted housed on Diksha the in collaboration with uh, UNICEF. There is another course which is very very important for everyone to learn is about COVID responsive behavior yes. and another is cyber hygiene practices uh, and we, we have taken a personal digital devices as uh, example of hygienic uh, practices, cyber hygienic practices. So among uh, these three courses, uh, can we demonstrate uh, one uh, which is COVID responsive behavior. I have taken up this as an example because uh, this is a burning issue nowadays. We are uh, going through this pandemic and uh, learning about COVID responsive uh, behavior is very, very important for our parents and also for uh, the uh, teachers. So we can see uh, various modules on uh, this particular topic that is uh, COVID uh, responsive uh, behavior and also a lot of resources linked to uh, this particular course. So here we can see uh, the uh, uh, course, there are uh, different modules and uh, the resources linked to it. Can we yes, see? We uh, can see there are two uh, modules okay. are available in this course. So, so can you click on one and show what are the, the, the there there is I can see a PPT and a video, yes, video. as a resource. So can we click on to the PPT first? So this is the uh, uh, PPT PDF of the PPT. It's uh, a text a resource e text. So we can see what all are uh, there for COVID responsive uh, behavior. So this course is also generic. Uh, we all can learn a lot from this. So we uh, can you scroll uh, it a bit so that we can uh, uh, take our viewers through uh, all the uh, slides. So uh, in this COVID responsive pe uh, period, uh, in this uh, COVID driven period, the reopening of schools is uh, in process. So what measures to be taken as COVID responsive behavior for the reopening of school is the topic of this particular course. So you can see what need to be done at school. Then about uh, teacher training program, what kind of teacher training programs can be carried out to make teachers aware about COVID responsive behavior. Can we scroll uh, a bit more? So here uh, we can see uh, yeah, wh what are the uh, other dimension of COVID responsive behavior. So and what are the benefit? It is about the uh, course. What are the benefit of taking this program is given here. So if we scroll uh, down, what are we going to learn through the uh, uh, text uh, module which is there? Then basic information about COVID-19 is another uh, dimension. Then symptoms of COVID. It is also very, very important to know the symptoms of uh, COVID so that it can be readdressed by uh, giving proper care and medication. If we scroll uh, more, we can see uh, modes of transmission, how COVID is transmitted from one person to another. 
uh, what uh, and what uh, precautions to be taken to avoid uh, catching uh, COVID. Then uh, we scroll a bit more, so we will get uh, the uh, preventive measures. What are the preventive measures? So you can see here how wearing mask is very, very important. Maintaining distance from each other is very, very important. Washing hand in a right manner is very, very important. And disposing of our uh, used uh, material like mask and other things are also uh, very, very important for adopting a COVID responsive behavior. So all these things are there in the PPT. So scroll it a bit more. So we can also see uh, how hand hygiene can be added to what are the steps of washing our, hand, uh, washing our hands properly. Then, uh, yeah, we can uh, scroll a bit more to see the pictorial depiction of washing our hands in a proper manner. So uh, this uh, is another resource for a course which is uh, suitable for uh, everyone. It's uh, also generic in nature. So we can see another resource associated to this particular uh, course and which is a video. So can we play the video? Hello and welcome to the e-training module on COVID-19. Our panchayat will provide masks, thermal screening equipment, sanitizers and soaps. We will also require a 1% solution of sodium hypochlorite for sanitizing the school. Of course, we will definitely provide the required solution so that all surfaces in the school can be timely sanitized and made germ-free. We will need to arrange taps, water and soap as well so that children can wash their hands. Toilets and urinals will also have to be cleaned, maintained and repaired. Sarpanch Madam, we will also need to clean water tanks and repair broken hand pumps. Alright. Let the school management committee start with the cleanup of water tanks and ensure the chlorination of drinking water every day. Sir, please also make a list of all the important tasks to be done and share this with the panchayat. Can we fast forward it? It's our it? duty to support the school in every way. As far as maintaining needs are concerned, it must be ensured that all cooks and helpers wear masks, aprons and caps. They must cook food in a hygienic manner and maintain proper hand sanitation. Besides, children must be seated one to two meters apart during lunch. Also, when children are leaving for home, ensure they leave in staggered groups, not all together, so as to avoid crowding and maintain physical distancing. As and when required, children will have to be allowed to go and drink water or use the toilet, so that these facilities do not get crowded during recess hours. Children will have to be reminded frequently not to touch each other's masks and not to cough or sneeze at each other even in jets. We must also ensure they do not bully or behave badly with a sick child. Caring for others is as important as observing physical distancing. During their break, make sure the children only play those games that allow physical distancing and they return to the class only after washing their hands properly with soap. Headmaster sir, we will also arrange for a doctor's visit once every month. We will have to continuously reinforce positive habits and skills on how to protect themselves from the coronavirus among children, their parents, sanitation workers and teachers. Yes, sir, much better. If children adopt protective habits like consistently maintaining a distance of 1 to 2 meters, wearing masks, not touching their eyes, nose and mouth, and frequently washing their hands with soap and water, and if proper arrangements are made for safe drinking water, regular hand washing, and clean toilets and urinals, then reopening schools would not be difficult at all. Remember, our health is a collective responsibility and needs each one's participation. Let's follow rules strictly to safeguard ourselves and the country from the corona pandemic. Through this training, you will learn how to keep students and yourself safe from COVID-19 when you return to... Uh, it is very interesting, ma'am. Uh, I think this course is very interesting for all of us and mm. we should have uh, to uh, uh, do this course from Diksha Porter because it is a very short course, yeah. I think. And uh, suitable for everyone. For, uh, suitable, suitable for, for everyone. everyone. So, uh, ma'am, you talked about the uh, courses for FLN, uh, Nishtha 3.0. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as per NEP 2020, FLN is very important and uh, emerging area. Yes. So, ma'am, do we have any resources in FLN, uh, in foundation literacy and numeracy? Yeah. In, yeah. in this area, do we yes, have any sir. resources? Yes, Dr. Prachi, you have said very rightly that uh, 
uh, foundational literacy and numeracy is emerging out as a very, very important area of concern as far as NEP 2020 is concerned. We already have a separate vertical for foundational literacy and numeracy on Diksha. And we have a lot of specific resources for foundational literacy and numeracy. So we have worksheets, we have assessment sheets, we have gamified learning and assessment contents. Then we have infographics and we also have bite-sized videos for foundational literacy and numeracy. So these are various kind of resources which are available for foundational literacy and numeracy. And I have uh, these resources to be demonstrated for our viewers uh, also. So uh, you can uh, just uh, help me out in uh, demonstrating these resources for foundational literacy and numeracy, beginning from uh, maybe the uh, uh, assess assessment sheet. We can see example of an assessment sheet. So here is the assessment sheet. Dr. Prachi, can you scroll it down and explain what is there in the assessment sheet? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, here we can see um, on the screen an assessment sheet. It is uh, based on the learning outcome which is mentioned here. Identify simple observable features, uh, shape, color, texture, aroma of leaves, trunk and bark of plant, animal and bird in immediate surrounding. We can see uh, here you can see 10 assessment questions are given in the sheet which is aligned to the learning outer, outcome and also it uh, these questions are trending to the learning of uh, the users and ensure the attainment of the learning outcome. We can see. Yeah, so these are 10 assessment items linked to the assessment sheet. So uh, teachers can take a print of these assessment sheets and uh, they can uh, uh, distribute uh, such assessment sheets among these students after teaching of course teaching the concept and then uh, they can uh, make the uh, teaching learning and assessment of the particular concept which is learning outcome based uh, interesting for these students. So we also have uh, worksheets. Uh, available for foundational literacy and numeracy. Can we see uh, an example of a uh, worksheet also? Yes, ma'am. Here, so, uh, ma here is one question uh, yeah. arise in my mind. Yeah. What is the difference between ma worksheets or assessment sheet? Both are in uh, uh, same uh, format. Yeah. So what is the difference between these two sheets? Yeah, so very valid question. So in worksheets, we have some activities to be done by these students. It is in the form of uh, activities. But when it comes to assessment sheets, questions based on the same learning outcomes and whatever we have done in the assessment sheets are given to assess the learning of the students. So that is the difference between uh, these two. So we can see uh, an example of worksheet as well. In worksheet, the activities are given where children need to explore their surroundings observe and then record their observations. But in the assessment sheet, they uh, have to answer the uh, questions which are given in the assessment sheets. So that is the difference. So we can also take up an example of infographic, which is also uh, which, uh, based on the same learning outcome. So uh, here uh, you can see uh, the uh, shapes of the leaf. The, this, inf this is an infographic uh, which uh, shows the shapes of different kinds of leaves. Then if we scroll uh, down, we can also see uh, the different colors, yeah, different color, then texture text. also, Yes. texture of the leaves. So Leaf we can aromas. differentiate leaves on the basis of their texture. Aroma, we cannot uh, just uh, make uh, students experience through a digital resource, but uh, through an infographic, we can just make them uh, recall uh, the, how they use their senses to smell aroma of the leaves. A uh, guava leaf smells like a guava, an onion leaf smells like an onion. So like that, we can make student aware about aromatic leaves also. 
So this uh, was the infographic about it and also uh, it is about bark of the tree, how uh, there are different kinds of bark of the tree and we see different kinds of animals, animals. also in our surroundings. So there is also a bite-sized video which is uh, on the same uh, learning outcome. We can also play that uh, video. So it's a very small uh, video uh, Tina, catering to the about? learning outcome. Hooray, Mom! I'm so excited! Let's go! Mom, these trees are so different from each other. Yes, dear. Some of them differ from each other, but some have similar characters. Look at these plants, Tina. Their leaves are different in color, but similar in shape. They are elongated. You can call them linear shaped. And this one, it is triangular. Video we can play. Do you remember this shape? Yes, Mom. I remember. I had started this shape in my maths class. Oh, Mom, mint must be growing around. Its fragrance always attracts me. Then let's find out where they are growing. Ah, I found them. Hey, look here, Mom. This is so amazing. Oh, yes. I used to think that only flowers are colorful. But leaves of this plant are so beautiful. Mm. This purple color is so attractive. And they are so soft to touch. Just like our velvet blankets. Yes, Tina. See, there are other plants also with colorful leaves. They are amazing. Oh, the bark of this tree is so smooth, unlike other trees. It varies. Some trees have smooth bark, some have grooved or bumpy. Now, let's go back home. Mom, we'll visit the park tomorrow as well. Sure, dear. Oh, Mom, look at them. A cat is running after a rat and a dog is running after the cat. <laughs> Good morning, Mom. Oh, wow. Which bird is this? This is woodpecker. Let's go to the balcony. You will observe a variety of birds chirping, interacting with each other, making this morning even more pleasant. Yes, I want to see more birds. So, uh, this uh, session was about uh, various resources which are available on Diksha. So we have demonstrated here a lot of digital resources and, uh, and we try to give you an experience uh, of uh, uh, resources which are there which can be, uh, which can be accessed uh, for teaching, learning and assessment. So Simran, do we have, we, can we take a few questions if there is time? Yeah, or, we have a lot uh, yeah. of questions but we have just left by the last two to three minutes so I think okay. we can take one question. Okay. So one of our viewers have asked us how visually impaired students could attend either assessment or evaluation on the Diksha portal. Is there any method? Uh, actually, uh, there are uh, 21 disability uh, which have been uh, listed and all these kind of disabilities also need to be catered to uh, using technology and using other modes of education. So uh, as a way forward, there is uh, Another initiative which is in pipeline, we are also going to have a separate CWSN uh, vertical on uh, Diksha. So uh, th th there are limitations uh, with uh, a number of disabilities. They need uh, support and help of peer parents or teachers to access uh, digital resources. But there are a lot of technology solutions which are there. The screen reader is one such solution where screen, if we uh, make that feature uh, enabled on our device, it can uh, tell us, read out the content for us and also tell us how to navigate a device that we are using. So enabling this feature, they can uh, easily, uh, independently access uh, the uh, digital resources and take uh, assessment and wherever any support of teachers, parents or peer is required, they can also be supported by them. So that is how they can uh, access. And there are a uh, lot of resources which are, lot, a lot of uh, planning which is going into making the Iksha portal more accessible for children with a special need and that too for all kind of disabilities. 
Yeah, thank you so much for explaining it so beautifully and in a detailed manner to all our viewers. And thank you everyone for being a part of this session where we discussed about digital resources on Diksha for teaching, learning and assessment. Today we have discussed about the different kinds of resources that are available on Diksha, whether it's inclusive education or vocational education, this wide range of resources are available. And tomorrow we'll discuss about accessing digital resources on Diksha. And the session has turned out really productive for all our viewers. This could be witnessed from the comment section. We are joined by over 3,000 viewers in this session. Great. Praising and elating this session. They are saying that it's a very useful, informative session. Then a very useful, nice program, good and informative. Thank you for coming up with different courses. Wonderful work being done by CIT and CRT. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Simran. And thank you, audience. The active participation is immensely important for us. I you know. don't have to worry because all your questions will be answered in our sessions. We still have three days left for this online training that is running on digital infrastructure for school education. Diksha. Once again, a word of thanks to both our experts who have joined Thank with you. us in Thank this you. session. Thank you to all the viewers. Stay connected. Our upcoming session is Sahiyo. Namaskar. Namaskar.